Hi folks, this is the first in a series of three advanced tutorials for the iClone 7 facial mocap system, including Faceware Real-Time for iClone. These tutorials aim to tell you everything you need to know about customizing the system, both for yourself and for the particular characters you're working on, and they assume that you have watched my previous tutorials and are already familiar with iClone's facial mocap plugin, as well as Faceware Real-Time for iClone. But before I go into detail, I want to summarize the tutorials so that you have a perspective on the relationship of the different methods. Whilst you can, of course, use strength sliders, as well as save and load specific strength profiles in the mocap plugin to control how large or small the animation from mocap will be, this doesn't actually change how the expressions look, except in terms of magnitude. It doesn't, for example, change the relative extent of how far eyebrows rise versus how far they go down, nor does it change the shape of an eyebrow as it rises or falls, and it's this level of modification of the mocap system itself which I'll be discussing in these tutorials. Now, there are three levels of system modification you can make. These are by calibration, by changing mapping parameters, and finally by changing the underlying character morphs which are used for mapping. I'll be dealing with calibration in this tutorial, and calibration is by far the simplest approach since it's instant and on the fly, and it doesn't affect any of the system's underlying settings or data. The next tutorial will cover the expression mapping panel, how the different profiles work, and how to make custom profiles. And then finally, I'll cover the morphs themselves, and how they can be changed to affect the system from the ground up. So let's get started with advanced calibration techniques in Faceware Real-Time for iClub. Calibration is the vital step whereby you match your features and neutral expression with the character's default expression, effectively providing a zero reference point whereby your neutral facial expression corresponds to the characters and all subsequent animation is relative to that. Now, I've mentioned a few times in previous tutorials that if you open your mouth slightly for calibration, it will improve lip sync, and I demonstrated how this works in my lip sync tutorial. But I'll quickly show that to you again, so I'll calibrate with my mouth clearly closed. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Now I'll calibrate with my mouth clearly open. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And finally, I'll calibrate with my mouth slightly open. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And as you can see, lip sync is improved if you open your mouth slightly for calibration. But you can do an awful lot more with calibration than simply change how emphatically the mouth closes. You can actually change the way features work simply by adjusting your own facial expression for calibration. I want to start off by showing you what happens when I change different parts of my facial expression for calibration. So I'm going to calibrate first with my eyebrows raised. And, as you can see, this actually lowers the character's eyebrows when I return to my default neutral expression. Next, I'm going to calibrate with my mouth frowning. Again, see what happens. And here you can see that frowning during calibration actually makes the character smile when I return to my neutral expression. And when I smile for calibration, The character frowns when I return to my neutral expression. Now, these effects occur simply because the system maps whichever facial expression I take when I press the calibration button to the character's neutral, and this means that whilst under most circumstances it's best for the user to take a completely neutral expression, you can actually change how the animation works by changing your calibration expression if needed. So, 
let's see how this principle can be applied constructively to improve animation for particular characters. I've loaded some variations on the same character here to demonstrate. Now, these characters have slightly different default facial features and expressions. Maybe the kind of variations you may experience with your own character models. So, here, the character has relatively high eyebrows. I'll just switch over to this one. And I'll calibrate normally. And you can see that when I move my eyebrows up and down, the eyebrows go too far on the character when I raise my eyebrows, and really they don't go down very far when I lower my eyebrows. But if I calibrate with my eyebrows a bit higher than normal, I can balance these out for animation. So now I'm switching to another character, and this one has lower eyebrows by default. So when I calibrate normally, and bring my eyebrows down, the character's brows are going down a bit too far. So let's see what happens when I calibrate with my own brows lowered in the first place. And again, the animation becomes more balanced by making that calibration adjustment. Switching now to a character with a particularly wide mouth, I'll calibrate normally. And you can see that it doesn't perform small mouth expressions very well, and the wide mouth expressions are quite extreme. So, in this case, if I calibrate with my own mouth slightly wider, again, it gives a better overall range of animation. Now I'm moving to a character with quite a small mouth. I'll calibrate normally. And you can see that the expressions are quite restricted. And if this was a cartoon character with a very small mouth, as many of them have, um, you may well find that that small mouth actually becomes extremely distorted when going into the likes of pucker expressions. So to improve the situation here, again, you can just essentially mirror what the character is doing and calibrate with your mouth a bit smaller than usual. So. and that actually widens the range of expressions. And the same goes for eyes. Here I'm selecting a character with quite thin, squinting eyes by default, and I'll calibrate normally. And when I squint, and when I close my eyes or blink, you can see that the eyelids are closing much too far. So, to remedy this, I can calibrate by squinting during calibration. And this will rebalance the eyes and make them open and close more effectively and allow me to squint without the eyes closing fully. So let's take one more example and this one clearly has a frown by default. I'll just preview on that and calibrate normally. And you can see that whilst the frown on this character is particularly effective because the character has a frown by default at the start, the smile perhaps isn't as effective as it could be. So I'll balance this out by calibrating with a slight frown on my face. And you can see now that the smile is much more effective. 
and exactly the same would apply if you were working on a character which by default had a smile. Um, you could smile a little for calibration and this would balance out the smiles and frowns on the character during animation. So, to sum up, if a particular character's face isn't responding to mocap as effectively as you want, because the character has very specific features, or a very specific expression, and you want to make the feature or features on the character animate more naturally and in a more balanced fashion, you can change your own expression, either the individual feature, even up to the whole facial expression, to mirror the character's default expression for calibration. Now, I've just reloaded the original character because I want to show you another important aspect of calibration. You see, we all have different faces and different feature proportions, and this can affect how well mocap will translate your facial expressions to 3D characters. To use eyebrows as an example, if your relaxed expression has high brows, and in fact, when you raise your brows, they don't go very far. You can see that this can be a problem in animation where the character's brows hardly rise at all. And when you bring your brows down, they go too far down with low brows expressions. So if you do have naturally high eyebrows, it can help to lower them a little for calibration. Which will then give you better brows expressions in animation. And it's exactly the same if you have naturally low brows. Where you may find that if you calibrate normally, there's little motion when you make low brows expressions. And the character's brows go up too high when you raise your brows. Again, you can get more balanced results if you calibrate with your brows slightly raised. so that the character's brows move more effectively down and up. And it's the same if you have naturally a wide or small mouth or a natural smile or frown by default. And if you're finding that this is limiting facial animation, you will find that adjusting for this by carefully doing the opposite can give you more natural, expressive results on 3D characters. Now, I've described two very different approaches to calibration. First, where you adjust your expression to improve the facial animation range of a character with particular features or expressions. And second, where you adjust your expression to improve your own facial animation range. And these concepts can be difficult to grasp and apply when all you're trying to do is to get going and produce facial animation. So my recommendation is to first simply test on your target character using the standard relaxed expression with mouth slightly open and only begin to test these methods if you're not getting the results you want. But in either case, exactly how much adjustment you should make really is down to what actually works best for you when you're preparing for the mocap session. Much like calibrating for lip sync, which I demonstrated in the lip sync tutorial, it's about finding the sweet spot which gives you the best results. And you can only do this by spending some time previewing and testing different calibration expressions for the particular character. However, it's very straightforward to change your expression for calibration, and you will find that these approaches are extremely responsive and well worth experimenting with, since they mean you don't have to spend long periods developing individual mapping profiles for yourself and the individual characters you're working with. This has been the first in a series of advanced tutorials for the iClone mocap system using Facewear Real-Time for iClone. The next tutorial will cover how to fundamentally change the mocap system itself by customizing mapping parameters in the iClone mocap plugin. Thanks for watching.